Let us now understand how to solve quadratic inequalities using intervals. We have already seen how to solve quadratic inequalities with the help of a graph and also algebraically. Now here this is an excellent process and we can extend it to any polynomial. Now quadratic equation is basically a degree 2 polynomial. Now in this particular case we have two factors x minus 3 times x plus 4 less than 0. So that becomes an inequality. If we have less than or greater than sign then it becomes inequality. As you know in inequality we expect a solution which could be a region or an interval. So in this case we'll figure out what interval is basically the solution for the given inequality. Now as you know x minus 3 times x plus 4 will be 0 at two points. One is x equals to 3 and the other point is x equals to minus 4. So first let's find what the zeros are, right? So first step is find zeros. So from the left side we find that the zeros are at x equals to 3 that is when x minus 3 is 0 or when x is equals to minus 4, right? So to find zeros basically we need to equate these factors to 0 and then work out the answer. Now once we know where the zeros are then we know that a quadratic function is a continuous graph. So it is going to cross the x-axis at these zeros. We need to now figure out whether it is positive or negative on either side of the zero. That is what we need to figure out, right? So what we can do is we can analyze both sides of the zeros and that's the gist of it, right? So basically if we see the x-axis, let us say that is our x-axis, then we have two zeros here. One is at minus 4. So let's say this one is at minus 4. The other one is at 3, right? So these are the two zeros. The points on the x-axis are minus 4 and 3. So that is where we have zeros. Now 0 is not a part of solution since we are looking for this quadratic function to be less than 0. So we'll make a hole here indicating that either side of this hole could be a part of solution but this definitely is not a part of solution, right? So that is the first step. Next step is that it's a good idea to take test points and test whether our function is positive or negative. These holes or zeros I should say in this case have divided the xy plane in three parts. One from minus infinity to minus 4, the other is from minus 4 to 3 and then from 3 to infinity. Now let's have test points in these three parts to check whether the function is positive or negative in these intervals. So I'll call this column as test points. Now a test point in the interval from minus infinity to minus 4 could be minus 5, right? So let's write minus 5 here. A good test point between minus 4 and 3 is 0 and beyond 3 we can take 4 as our test point. Now what are we going to test? We are going to test these two factors. Let me draw two more lines for these two factors and then we'll see what the function is. That is when you multiply them whether we get positive or negative. So the first factor is x minus 3. The second one is x plus 4, right? If I put minus 5 in x minus 3, I get a negative answer. Well, I'm not interested in the value of minus 8. Negative is good enough for me. Negative 5 minus 3 is a negative answer. If I put 0 here, 0 minus 3 is negative. Let me write negative here. 4 minus 3 is positive, correct? Now let's put the same test points in the second factor, which is x plus 4. Minus 5 plus 4 is negative, 0 plus 4 is positive, and 4 plus 4 will be positive. Now when you multiply these two, that is our quadratic equation, which is x minus 3 times x plus 4, 
what do we get? So let's multiply. Two negatives will give us positive, correct? A negative and a positive will give us negative. Two positives will give us positive. Do you see that? What we need really is less than zero. That means negative, right? So this portion in between minus 4 and 3 becomes our solution set. Since x minus 3 times x plus 4 is negative in this interval between minus 4 and 3. So that becomes our solution and we can write down solution as x belongs to real numbers where x is greater than minus 4 and is less than 3, right? So that is how we can get solution of quadratic inequality by analyzing the interval. So the strategy here is first find your zeros then write down your test points and then we need to check each factor at the test points right sign right then you check sign of each factor and then multiply these factors to see whether the inequality is satisfied or not right and then product of signs right two negatives will give you positive a positive and a negative opposite signs will give you negative always and same signs will give you positive right now if the question is asking for less than zero we're looking for solution as negative right so the interval which has the required value is a part of solution so that is how you find solution using interval analysis so this is a very neat technique and here as you can see we can have any number of factors do you see that and then we can multiply and check and therefore this is an excellent technique to be used for any polynomial i hope you appreciate it thank you